Hey folks, welcome to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, uh, it's a real quick excerpt again from the video series Focus on Trapping. And these ones are all about how to grade and classify your fur. Now, I know a lot of you trappers out there, you've been doing this for a lot of years, and still today I send fur away and I get my statement back and it's got all kinds of letters and numbers and most of it I understand. Uh, but if you're a new trapper and you know you don't know the difference between damaged and slightly damaged or eastern or northern or wherever your pelts are coming from or all the different classifications and grades of fur, uh, you might find these, these next couple of videos real interesting. These videos are a little on the older side, okay, but the, the information is still good, it's still relevant, and especially if you're a beginning trapper out there and you want to get as much information as you can about what happens to your fur once you drop it off at the deep. Just go ahead and give these videos a watch and uh, at least then you'll have some more information as to where your fur goes and, and what happens. Listen, if you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, we sure would appreciate it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, turn on that bell so that you get notified when we upload new content. So anyway, stay tuned and here we go with the video on, on fur classification, fur grading. One hundred and ten. One hundred and ten. One fifteen. One fifteen. One twenty. We have it. One twenty. One twenty. Now. One hundred and twenty. One hundred here. We have it. One hundred and twenty. Now. One hundred and twenty. One hundred. Last call. One hundred and twenty-five dollars. The fur trade has changed enormously over the last few decades. In order to simplify the task of international purchasers, a classification system has been developed which makes it possible to offer for auction fur lots which have been graded in order to ensure uniformity of size, quality and color. This greatly facilitates the manufacture of garments. We'll first go over the different criteria used in grading fur. The criteria are the geographic origin of the pelt, its size, quality, and color. Auction house graders classify the pelts and sort them into lots according to these various factors. The first criterion used to sort furs is geographic origin. Furs arrive at the auction house from all over North America, both Canada and the United States. The characteristics of fur vary from one region to another. These differences occur in the texture, color and length of hair and in the thickness of the leather. Here. The various colors of beaver pelts in different regions can be seen. Often, furs are classified according to only two broad regions, eastern and western. For certain species, however, many more regions are taken into account. Mink fur, for instance, can be classified into 16 different regions. Once this first classification has taken place, the furs are sorted by size. In general, larger furs are worth more. However, exceptions to this are female fisher and kid lynx, whose silky, delicate fur is highly prized. Later, we'll see how the pelts of each particular species are measured and sorted by size. Pelts are then sorted according to quality. With undamaged pelts, the selection is determined by maturity. To fully understand why pelts are sorted for fur quality, we must recall that hair growth is a recurring annual event. Using the beaver as an example, we see that in summer the underfur is short and most guard hairs are undeveloped. 
As the season progresses, the underfur gets longer and the guard hairs become fully developed. By winter, both the underfur and guard hairs are at maximum length and density. This is the fully prime pelt that will have the greatest value. Later in the season, the guard hairs and underfur begin to shed and the pelt loses value. The hair growth cycle can also be seen on the leather side of the pelt. When hairs are beginning to develop, much pigment is produced in the base of the hairs. As a result, the leather of early caught pelts appears dark blue. As hairs become mature, less pigment is produced until in the fully prime pelt, the pigment celts are inactive and the leather is creamy white. The fur of most species reaches prime and therefore peak quality between November and March. Graders may examine both the fur and the leather to determine the degree of primeness of a pelt. During the grading process, the pelts are divided into various quality classifications. These classifications can vary slightly from one auction house to another. The most common classification system contains six grades, from the highest quality to the least. The first grade on this list is 1 Part 2. These pelts are of the finest quality. Part 2 is added to protect the auction house in case a purchaser finds a pelt of slightly inferior quality in a given lot. The top quality pelts in this lot are fully prime. The leather of a beaver pelt of this quality is generally creamy white, soft and supple without any spotting or damage. The guard hair and under fur have attained their maximum length and density. The density of this high quality fur is flawless, even on the flanks and neck. The guard hair is well supported by the dense under fur so that it immediately reverts to its natural position if rubbed from the tail toward the neck. The fur is soft and silky and has a lovely natural gloss. In some species, such as the Martin, Grade 1 Part 2 furs are further subdivided into three classes, heavy, semi-heavy and light. The next grade is 1 and 2. These furs are generally slightly early, that is, they were harvested just before becoming fully prime. The quality of these furs is very close to the highest grade. Though the under fur and the guard hair are not quite as well developed, these are still fine quality pelts. Pelts classified in grades 2, 3, 4 and 5 were harvested either before or after they reached full primeness. The value of these pelts declines as the grade number rises to 5. Let's look at the most common example of each of these grades, still taking the beaver as our model. Let's start with grade 2. The blue leather of this early pelt indicates that it isn't prime. These furs are often described as woolly. The guard hair is short and open or sparse and the underfur is thick and wavy, giving the appearance of wool. They lack gloss. Grade 2 pelts are often further subdivided in three classes, Good 2, Ordinary 2, and Low 2. Now let's see a Grade 3 pelt. Pelts of this quality were harvested either very early or very late in the season. The leather of very early pelts is uniformly blue. The underfur is short and the guard hair is sparse and open. The fur of the late pelt has been rubbed on the flanks and the neck. Pelts classified in grades 4 and 5 are either very early or very late, 
and therefore of very poor quality. These lots may also include pelts harvested during the full prime season, but from animals that were sick or from environments lacking in food. Here is a grade 4 pelt, harvested very late in the season. The leather is stiff and like cardboard. The guard hair is obviously badly rubbed everywhere on the pelt, but especially on the back, where it's totally absent in some places. This pelt has little value. Three additional grades are used to classify pelts that have suffered damage, whether natural, in fights for instance, in the trap, or during later handling. The pelts in the good, slightly damaged category are highest quality pelts which have suffered some minimal damage which can easily be repaired, such as superficial cuts or slight marks caused by scavengers after the death of the animal. Without this damage, the pelts would have been graded one part two. The small white blemish that can be seen on this leather comes from a clip. The fur is of good quality and the flanks are well covered with no rubbing. But a bare patch marks the clip area. Pelts graded slightly damaged are also superior quality pelts which would have been graded one part two or one and two. The damage they have suffered is greater than in the previous grade but does not affect the main part of the pelt. The leather of this pelt shows marks. The fur is slightly more rubbed than in the previous case and there is less hair in some areas because of clips. This last category of damaged pelts includes pelts that would normally have been classified in grade one and two or in the good two and ordinary two sections of grade two. This is an example of an extremely damaged pelt. The following are visible. Large tears and cuts, broad stitches, decay, and bite marks. This pelt has little market value. Depending on the pelts available, a fourth grade of badly damaged pelts can be added. This category includes low quality furs which would normally have been classed low two or three. This table shows the average market value of damaged pelts compared to normal grades. Note, however, this can vary according to the species. Besides being sorted by origin, size, and quality, furs are also sorted by color. For some species, such as mink, marten, and fisher, purchasers are primarily concerned with the color of the back fur. Here we see several different colors of wild mink. The grader can use up to six different shade categories to sort these furs running from extra dark to extra pale. Besides being sorted by shade, furs are also graded by clarity, that is, according to the amount of reddish or yellowish brown tinge to the under fur. There are four grades of clarity, clear or blue, slightly off, off, and badly off. These two mink pelts are both the same shade, but one is graded clear and the other badly off. The under fur of the first pelt is steel blue and has no reddish or yellowish tone. It's the ideal. 
the reddish tone of the other pelt is clearly visible. For other species, such as coyote and lynx, it's the color of the belly that counts, because this fur is most important in making garments. The most highly prized furs from these species have completely white guard hair and underfur on the belly. They're sorted clear, or A color. As the reddish or yellowish castor intensifies, the furs are sorted into color B, C, or D, or according to the other scheme, slightly off, off, or badly off. We have now reviewed the basic criteria according to which fur is graded. This makes it possible to classify furs in lots of uniform size, quality, and color. This classification system greatly facilitates marketing by simplifying the task of international purchasers and auction houses. It also assures the trapper of the highest value for pelts sold. You can see how these criteria apply to the classification of the different species of semi-aquatic and land animals by watching the videos entitled Fur Classification Land Animals and Fur Classification Semi-Aquatic Animals.